Hello and welcome back. Today we'll be covering the spinal cord. So the vertebral canal encloses the spinal cord and its meninges and all the vessels associated with it. The spinal cord occupies the superior two-thirds of the canal and it terminates at the conus medullaris, which is just a prolonged uh, pia matter. In later fetal life, the conus medullaris is about like um, L1 to 3. In older children, about like 1 to 7 years old, it's um, in T12 to L3. And in adults, it's generally from um, T11 all the way down to L3, with L1 being the average. And um, so you can see here, um, after, you know, the end of the conus medullaris is the ca cauda equina and then the fetum terminale so here it is so the parts of the spinal cord that are enlarged is in the cervical region right here and in the lumbar region here um, those places have more gray matter because the their nerves now going all the way up into the the brain and then the, these nerves will be supplying the lower limbs so um, the gray matter uh, is increased to um, increase the amount of uh, information processing so the fetum felum terminale is the uh, final uh, part of the uh, spinal cord and it's a filament made out of connective tissues depend descending from the apex of the conus medullaris and it attaches to the coccyx the central canal extends into the uh, filum for only five to six millimeters so not very much at all so let's go through the segments the upper cervical segments are on the same level of the vertebra and then the lower uh, cervical and upper thoracic is um, as you can see here uh, one vertebra is higher than the corresponding segments and as we go through it the middle thoracic segments lie uh, they're two vertebra higher and then the lower thoracic they're three vertebra higher than the segments and in the lumbar segments they lie on the level of like as you can see here t tend to uh, about T12 in this particular picture. And the sacral and coxial uh, lie on the level of T12 uh, and to L1. So the spinal cord has the main big fissure right here. It's the anterior medial median fissure. And here's the posterior sulcus and septum. And then there are the anterolateral and the posterior lateral sulci. And the gray matter is in the center. It's surrounded by the white matter. The gray matter is made out of the nerve cell body and the neuroglia and the unmyelinated neurons. While the white matter is um, the myelinated fibers. And of course, it gets thicker closer to the brain in the cervical enlargement. And in the very center of the gray matter is the central canal of the spinal cord. So I will be using these terms uh, interchangeably. So the dorsal is also known as the posterior and the anterior, oops, oh, sorry, and the anterior uh, horn and uh, associated uh, rami and trunks uh, is also called like the ventral. So just as a warning, I will be using these terms interchangeably because um, professors use them interchangeably and it's good just to know. So the posterior horn or the dorsal horn is involved in uh, sensory information and the lateral or the anterior horn is uh, associated with movement information and the lateral horns only appear in the thoracic and upper lumbar. The green comes here, here it is, uh, transverses the paired horns across the spinal cord, and inside of that is the central canal. So the functions of the um, spinal cord is to, um, is an impulse conduction. The 
ascending tracks uh, convey sensory information back to the brain, while the descending tracks send information from the brain um, to the limbs to move. And an uh, important part of the spinal cord is the reflex integration center. Um, it's a center for the spinal reflexes, and that occurs, let's go back a picture, when the action potential uh, goes up here, the, the sensory, and then it goes through an interneuron and back out uh, through the, uh, the ventral roots, um, and it goes down through the motor roots uh, without ever reaching the brain. So uh, you can use this to test for uh, any form of uh, spinal cord injury. So there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves, and um, as we repeated before, the anterior is associated with the motor nerves, and the posterior um, roots are involved in the sensory uh, uh, sensory information. Uh, the root is attached to the cords by these rootlets, and the posterior uh, nerve roots have the posterior root ganglion, which conduct the peripheral and the central nerve fibers. As we know, the spinal nerves are a mix of both like motor and sensory fibers. And after emerging from the intraventricular foramen, uh, it divides into the larger anterior rami and the smaller posterior uh, ramus. As you can see here, the posterior is smaller, anterior is larger. So there are two ganglionated uh, nerve trunks uh, because the, there are you know, two sides and um, it follows the vertebra. So there will be three uh, for the cervical uh, spine, um, 11 to 12 for the thoracic region, four to five for the lumbar, and four to five for the pelvic region. The ganglion impar is a location where the trunks converge, so about here. And the sympathetic connector neurons are located in the lateral horn of the uh, T1L2. The myelinated axon leave the, central, uh, the spinal cord in the anterior nerve root, and then they pass through the preganglionic fibers to the paravertebral ganglia of the sympathetic trunk. And the post ganglionic fibers pass the thoracic and upper uh, lumbar spinal nerves as the gray rami commissures. So the preganglionic ganglionic fibers, pardon me, pass through the ganglia on the thoracic part of the sympathetic trunk without synapsing. Instead, they form the three splanchnic nerves, the greater, which are the five to nine thoracic ganglia, the lesser, which is 10 to 11 thoracic ganglia, and the least, which are the uh, 12 thoracic ganglia. And then the postganglionic fibers come from the peripheral plexus. So the blood supply, um, it's uh, the main one is the posterior spinal arteries and uh, the anterior spinal arteries and the reticular arteries that will like you know go around and feed um, the vertebra from the sides and all of the veins will drain into the internal uh, vertebral venous plexus so the dura is the most external it's dense it's strong it's continuous through the foramen magnum with the dura uh, covering the brain and it ends on the Velum terminale on S2. It's separated from the vertebral canal by epidural space, and that space has the loose areola tissue and internal vertebral venous plexus. The dura extends along each nerve root and is continuous with the spinal nerve epineurium at the intervertebral foramen, and the subdural space uh, separates the dura from the arachnoid membrane. So the arachnoid membrane is delicate and it's impermeable. And the subarachnoid uh, down here contains the uh, CSF. And once again, the arachnoid is continuous with the cranial arachnoid. 
and it ends on the filum terminale at S2. The lower end of the uh, subarachnoid space has the nerve roots of the cauda equina, and it's bathed in uh, CSF. The arachnoid matter continues down the spinal nerve roots and forms uh, small lateral extensions. So the cerebrospinal fluid is uh, located in the cerebral ventricles and the subarachnoid space. It's clear and it's colorless. It's actively secreted by the choroid plexus in the lateral um, third and fourth ventricle. And it enters the subarachnoid space through the three fora, foramina in the root of the fourth ventricle. Now I remember it as the choroid creates and the arachnoid absorbs. The arachnoid villi and the granulations are um, the actual uh, par uh, parts of the arachnoid that uh, absorbs. Uh, there's 150 milliliters approximately of uh, CSF, and it's uh, 60 to 100 uh, 150 millimeters mercury of pressure. Uh, the entire volume is replaced about four times a day, and uh, the components, it has a lower uh, potassium and calcium and glucose concentration than blood, and it has very little protein. It has a higher sodium and uh, chloride concentration. So the pia matter is a vascular membrane. It's continuous with the pia in the brain and it fuses with the filum terminale. It's thickened between the nerve roots to form the ligamentum denticulum, which passes laterally to the uh, dura. And it suspends the spinal cord in the middle of the dural sheath. It extends along each nerve root and becomes continuous with the epineurium. So for the lumbar puncture, for the fetus and for babies, uh, you tap it at the Jacobi line, which is at L4 uh, to 5. And in adults, you tap a little higher around um, L3 to L4. And some of the complications can be a splitting headache. So for that, you uh, make the patient lay supine and you hydrate them, usually with IV saline, and give them a little bit of pain medication, um, generally uh, like uh, acetaminophen. You don't want to give them aspirin because they might uh, uh, bleed a little bit too much. Um, for uh, very bad headaches, you give them 500 milligrams of IV caffeine, and for the most serious complication, you give them a blood patch. So when you tap the um, CSF, when it comes out, it can pulse with each heartbeat and each phase of respiration. Uh, complications um, showing in the CSF would be xanthochromia. And I said before that the CSF is usually clear and colorless, but in xanthochromia, it will become like uh, yellow and kind of cloudy. And that is an indication of a, a subarachnoid hemorrhage. This could be because of a uh, trauma, or it could be because you have um, inserted the needle and have um, nicked one of the small uh, veins or capillaries. Caudal uh, anesthesia is used to induce a uh, caudal block, usually in children, um, because it is a like complete sensory and motor block. So if you're trying to uh, perform any kind of procedure on a child, they're not going to kick you. So you, you insert it through the uh, sac sacral hiatus because uh, in the sacral hiatus, it, uh, the spinal nerves emerge. So you want to bathe the spinal nerves as they emerge from the dural sheath. But you do not want to go too high in the hiatus because that might cause a full block or um, paralysis. So thank you for your attention and good luck studying.